Assalamu alaikum. Hello, everyone. So, my name is Maryam, and uh, I was born here in Dubai in 1982 in a beautiful hospital called Al Maktoum Hospital. Al Maktoum Hospital was not only the first hospital in Dubai, but also one of the oldest hospitals in the United Arab Emirates. The reason I'm talking about it is that I believe that a lot of what we do as humans is related to our well-being when it comes to the when the when it comes to infrastructure design, buildings, and the facilities that we are in. Al Maktoum Hospital was designed in 1950. Finally, as I went through my career and my internship and my residency, I ended up working there. And later on, if we are to look at the future of Al Maktoum Hospital, right now it's going to be converted into a museum. A museum to help people reconnect with heritage, with their journeys of healthcare, and with storytelling. Very much like my story. When I started my practice, I started as a family doctor, and right now I'm designing spaces for people to help them reconnect with themselves, to help them reconnect with their states of well-being, and by design, by furniture, and architecture. But that's about me. I'm here to talk to you, to you guys today about the future of well-being, and I don't think that we can talk about the future without looking at the past. His Highness Sheikh Zayed bin Sultan Al Nahyan, may he rest in peace, uh, has a very famous quote that um, is one of my favorite quotes. And he says that in order for you to create the present and the future that you desire, you must be able to look at the past thoroughly and learn from it. So the importance of looking into the past is something that we hold dearly on. Uh, as you might know, this is the year of Sheikh Zayed, and actually yesterday we celebrated uh, the 100th anniversary of his birth. So let me take you down memory lane, 2002. 2002, um, I was just practicing my internship after a very long shift, probably 22 hours in, ready to leave, um, just a couple more hours before I have to head home and just, you know, Relax. Um, I was there in the hospital waiting for my shift to end, kind of exhausted, uh, when I got a call from my first on-call doctor, who's the doctor in charge, telling me that I need to scrub in. So there I was, getting really excited, but not really, because I have scrubbed in in many operations before, but I never were, uh, was invited to assist. So he tells me, you are going to be assisting. I got really excited. It's like, it wasn't like I had spent the last 22 hours on my feet. It felt like I just got there. So for you, for those of you who are in the medical industry, probably, you probably know that um, being called to your first uh, operation to assist in is a big deal. So I rushed to the um, changing room as I was scrubbing in. I saw one of the nurses leaving the hospital. She was finishing her shift, and I asked her, how many, how many operations do we still have going on? And she went, like, just the one, just the amputation. I was shocked. I'm like, is this going to be my first operation to assist in, an amputation? I was actually um, kind of stuck amidst a few interesting feelings. There was excitement. Uh, I was proud that the doctor thought that, you know, uh, I could assist in, on this. But then at the same time, I was terrified, and I was trying to remember who was it from my patients that I admitted the last week or so that might be going through this procedure. And I remembered a few patients, a lot of them diabetic. I remembered one gentleman specifically, he was 43 years old, and he wasn't he wasn't the happy uh, patient. Not, not a lot of patients are when they visit us in the hospital. 
But him specifically, I remember him being really sad and burdened by his illness. He had a lot of foot ulcers, and we admitted him to the uh, ward. So I didn't really get a chance to see him after we admitted him, but what happened was that he, his case deteriorated, his blood sugar was not regulated, and I remember during the week uh, hearing little bits of information about him from the doctors in their morning rounds, saying things like, he's a hopeless case, he never really took his medications, he doesn't have the support system, no one is ever there with him from his family. That was a sad thing to see, but really I was, I was thinking, how will he feel after the operation? So I walked in, the operation was a blur, it was great, it was a success, medically speaking. We, it was perfect, there, was, there were no complications, no side effects. But I remember leaving the hospital after that shift, a very long, maybe 26 hour shift or more, uh, going back home and thinking, that we have failed. We have failed as humans, we have failed as a society, we have failed as healthcare, as patients, as an ecosystem. And this happened right in the beginning of my healthcare um, career. So it really was a stop for me to kind of stop and have a look at what is happening. How might we have saved that patient's life? That was back in 2002. Currently, the statistics are every 30 seconds, there's an amputation happening in the world because of a diabetic foot. So yes, we, have, we did go um, further with technology, with the knowledge, with healthcare all around the world. Here in, the Dubai, in Dubai, in the United Arab Emirates, we did, um, we did exceptionally well when it comes to controlling diabetes. But all around the world, globally, there, this is still happening. Patients are still losing their legs. So I was asked to talk about the future. You guys probably know or heard about all the exceptional things happening in the world when it comes to AI, electromedical records, EMR, connecting everyone through blockchain, even genetically clipping off that gene that kind of helps you um, stop the illness from happening and all those other things that the world is working on they're beautiful you know you can be a patient sitting at home having access to your doctor through telecommunication you get your appointment you move forward oh that's the hospital you move forward <laughs> or not anyways so That could be the case, that could very well be the case. A patient could have it all connectedly by, uh, by being connected to his doctors virtually, by being connected to his medical records, by getting sensors that give him feedback on what's happening on with his blood pressure, blood sugar, if we were to talk about that patient, just give him the knowledge and the awareness that he needs, if that was indeed what he needed. But we can also have a patient who is sitting in his office, eating as he wants, putting on weight, having access to his insulin pump, and changing his medications accordingly, but not really actively being involved in his health care and well-being. So how I see the future of health, health and well-being to be is that you, we, as <laughs> globally, need to look at the patient holistically. We need to look at the patient experience holistically. So it starts with the facilities. The facilities need to be welcoming. Okay? The facilities need to be welcoming. They need to have that friendliness, that um, atmosphere of inviting a patient in. Hospitals are no longer going to be hospitals. They will be more of a social support network. Doctors are not going to be doctors. They are going to be health advisors. Patients are not going to feel dependent on someone else to tell them how to, to deal with their health care, but they will be empowered. They will have the knowledge. The knowledge is already there. 
but they will also have the tools that can help them make healthier choices. And us, as a society and as humans, we will have the ecosystem where we can all connect to each other, connecting well-being to healthcare, socially, emotionally, mentally, financially, economically, in all the ways possible. You cannot separate healthcare from education. You cannot separate healthcare from the finance sector. You cannot separate healthcare from society. So the only way for us to move forward as a humanity and to succeed is to bring in all those elements together where the society comes together, the social support, the, um, the, the fitness um, element, the food element, the farming. You're going to hear a lot of people talking to you today about AI and blockchain and financing and social entrepreneurship. All of this needs to come together for the patient's experience and the patient's well-being. So how I see the future and how healthcare will benefit indeed with AI and with um, all the new technologies out there, with the genetic clipper and others, but also by empowering the client and the patient to have an equal relationship with him, with his healthcare providers and with his society. Thank you.